Hi everybody, what we're gonna talk about today is buckling and we're gonna put this with a truss problem. All right, so typically um, this section is going to be in a chapter in the Mechanics and Materials book called uh, Columns or Buckling, something like that. And that's what we're gonna do in this one. So here you see we've got this truss. It's not too complicated of a truss. We've got a um, pin over here, roller here. We've got applied forces P and P right here. Now we're also told that members of the truss are gonna be pin connected. That's typically what we assume. Uh, member BD, which is right there, is gonna be an A992 steel rod. It's got a radius of two inches. We wanna find the max load P that can be supported by the truss without causing the member to buckle. All right, so we've got that. Now, when you're talking about buckling, what is the main equation we use? Do you guys remember? Well, it's gonna be that critical load equation, right? So typically most of the books will call it PCR and the equation is gonna be pi squared EI over K L squared. All right, so KL, that product, and then you square the whole product. So this is gonna be the equation that we're gonna be using because it wants us to make sure we're not gonna have buckling. All right, so the critical load equation. Now, what we need to do is figure out how to use this. So let's kind of think about what's going on in this system. So we've got these applied loads P, right? And they're pulling down and we don't want buckling in this member right here, member BD. So when you think about buckling, just think about that as you're gonna have you know, failure in the member, right? So we don't wanna go beyond the critical load because once we go to the critical load uh, and beyond that, we're gonna have failure in our member, right? So we don't want that. So this is gonna give us our max that we can have in this member, right? So I need to relate that to the supplied force P. So that's what we need to do. So we need to relate P to PCR, okay? Because I need that relationship because this gives the max force that we can have in member BD. Okay, and then you know you could also use it for these other members too and figure out what P value you would have for those as well. But we're just going to focus on BD. Okay, so how can we relate all that together? Well, first of all, I need to know what the force is in member BD. Okay, I need to know that internal load. So what way, what, what can we do to find that? Y'all remember? Well, what about method of sections, right? We could use method of sections to find the force in member BD, okay? Now, in order to do that, I need to know what's going on at A and G here. All right, so you could actually just look at this and you could tell that the forces at A and G will both be P going up, but let's go ahead and we'll solve that with equations just so everybody sees where we're getting it. So let's just kind of draw this rough little outline of the truss. We've got forces P going down. All right, so that's P, and that's P. And then we've got this pin at A, so that's gonna go up. So we'll have AY, and then we've got this here, which is called GY. And technically we should have an AX here, but AX is gonna go to zero, right? Because we don't have any other forces in the X direction. So that's zero. And let's put our distances here. All right, so 16 feet. So you could go through and we could do a moment equation Let's just do a moment about A, and that will allow us to find the GY. All right, so counterclockwise will be positive. So this P right here is gonna be a negative moment, right? Because if I have it like this, it's gonna pull it down that way clockwise. So you got negative P times 16. 16, because I need that perpendicular distance between this force and point A. Next one, this force, that's also negative. Distance here is 32, and then finally we have GY. 
Now GY is going to be a positive moment, right? Because it's going to push it, go it up like that. So it's counterclockwise. So that'll be plus GY. And then we have 16 times 3. All right, so what's that? 48. Set that to 0. So with this, you can group these together. And then we get um, negative 48P minus 48GY equals 0. So solve for GY. Um, the 48s will cancel. And then we'll, whoops, this is positive here. All right, so 48s cancel, and um, you're left with just P. Okay, so GY is going to be P, just like we said, because we could tell that um, from symmetry here. And then we can do our Y equation to get AY. All right, so we got AY minus P minus P plus GY equals zero. We know GY is P though. Okay, so AY then is going to be, we got negative 2P plus P, so that's negative P equals zero. All right, so AY is P, just like we said. So this is all kind of extra work. We didn't really need to show, um, but I figured I'd go ahead and put it on here for completeness. Okay, so now we've got AY, GY. So now let's look at this section here. So I want to find the force in member BD. Okay, because the force in that member is going to determine if we have buckling or not. So let's draw the left section. You could also do the right section if you wanted. I just always usually do the left. And let's see what BD is. All right, so we got something that looks like that. And then let's put our forces on here. We have AY, which is P, all right? And then here at C, we've got P going down. And then for the section part, every member that we cut through, we're gonna draw a force going out of the section. All right, so this one will be BD. We've got this here, which is CD this one here, which is CF, okay? That's 16 feet right there, uh, and this height is 12 feet. Okay, so now we're going to find um, BD. So what would be the easiest way to do that? What do y'all think? Because I don't need CD and CF. So I'm thinking, if we take a moment about this point right here, point C, then that'll get rid of CD and CF, right? Because those forces are going right through C. So that'll leave me with BD. So that's going to be your quickest way to find that force. So let's do the moment about C and see what we get. Okay, so this force over here, you know, that one's going to be clockwise, so it's negative. P times 16, there's that 16. And then this force P goes through C, so I don't need to worry about that. And we already said we don't need to worry about CD or CF because they go through point C. So BD is the only other one we need to worry about. And that one is gonna be clockwise, right? Because it's gonna go that way. So that's negative, so we'll have negative BD. And then the distance we want to go from here to here, so that's going to be 12. All right, so now we got that. So now we can go ahead and we can find um, what our value is. Okay, so BD then, we're going to move the P times 16 over, becomes positive, and we divide by negative 12. All right, so that's going to give us negative... Um, P16 over 12, but we can reduce this down, right? You could pull a 4 out of all of these. So we would have negative 4 times P over 3. All right. And the negative sign just indicates that we drew BD in the wrong direction, right? So it should be going in. So this member here is in compression. Okay. So now we've got that. Now let's figure out how to use this 
with our PCR equation. All right, so we've already established that PCR is the max force we can have in member BD for us not to have buckling, right? So what I want to do is I want to figure out what P can be then to not exceed that value. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the 4P over 3, and I'm not going to worry about the negative because the negative is just telling me it's in compression, right? So I don't really need to worry about the sign. I just need the force, magnitude of force. So we're going to set this equal to PCR, okay? So let's put that. Okay, and now we need to plug in these values. All right, and then once we get all of that, we'll be able to solve for P. Okay, so let's find, figure out what E, I, K, and L should be. Okay, so E is just based on the material, right? So this is A992 steel. So the E value for that is going to be 29 times 10 to the third. That's KSI. So that'll come from a table in the back of the book. Um, your I, these are um, going to be basically uh, solid cylinders, right? They have a radius of uh, two inches. So R is two inches. So I then will just be pi over four uh, times two to the fourth. And that gives me 4 pi, and that's inches to the fourth. So now we've got those. Now remember the k value, that is going to depend on what kind of connections you have. So if it's pin connected, or if you have a pin and a fixed connection, all of those. So there's a couple of different choices you have. Um, this one is going to be equal to 1 because both ends of BD are pin connected. Oops. Okay, so that's how I knew to choose one for that. And then we have length L. So L is going to be the length of your member. So ours is going to be 16 feet. But notice everything else is in inches, right? So I need to convert that. So we're going to multiply it by 12 to get inches. Okay, so that's 192 inches. All right. So now we're ready to plug everything in. So we're going to have 4p over 3 equals pi squared. We got 29 times 10 to the third. That's uh, kip per square inches. And then we have i, which is 4 pi inches to the fourth. Put that over k, which is 1, doesn't have units. And then we're going to have l multiplied by that, which is 192 inches squared. OK. And then if you look at your units, you're going to get what you need. Um, because if you look, this cancels two of these. And then this down here will be inches squared, which cancels out the inches squared up here. Okay, so you end up with kips. So now we want to solve for P. So 4P over 3, if you simplify this right side, you get 97.57. That's kip. And then now solve for P. All right, so P then um, is going to be 73.2. Okay, so this is the max value you could have for that applied force P. All right, and that will ensure that we never go beyond this PCR value because this is the max value we could have. And P is going to be less than that because the force in member BD is, you know, 4 times P over 3. So this ratio here is greater than 1, right? So that means our applied force has to be less than uh, that 97 value. Okay, but that's how you could go through and uh, figure out what P would be if you have a truss member that you're looking at. And then one last thing on this, um, a lot of the times you want to check and make sure that that's a valid answer 
because remember this PCR equation is only going to be valid if your critical stress is below the yield stress. Otherwise, it's not going to be a valid answer. So we want to do that next just to kind of check for everything. All right, so we'll check to make sure it's valid. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to find that critical stress, which is just going to be uh, PCR over A. Okay, so for PCR, we got 97.57. Put it over the area, the cross-sectional area of uh, your member. So remember, radius is 2 here. So we would have pi times 2 squared. Let's put our units here. All right, so then you divide that. That's going to be 7.76 KSI. Okay, and this is less than the yield stress for that steel rod. Okay, so now let's write down one more thing here. I'm out of room here. Okay, so 7.76 is less than our yield stress. So this checks out. All right, so result is okay. More is valid. And the value for this yield stress, just so we have it, is going to be 50 KSI. And that's coming from the table. All right, so this problem it comes from the Hibbler book. So here's the table at the back of the book for um, the materials. So you can see here is A992 steel. If you come over here, we're looking at yield strength. And it's got one for tension, one com for compression. So we have compression here. So we're going to use the 50. It's the same for each one. But um, you always want to make sure you're using the right one. So that would be our yield stress. This is below that. So it checks out. So our result is valid. OK, hopefully you all found that one helpful. And y'all have a good rest of the day. I will see you guys next time.